And we are on the air. Switching over to mainstream now. Today we are at Red Hill Aerodrome and we're going to be flying a pretty historical plane. This is the Piper J3 Cub. The Cub was intended as a trainer plane in the 1930s and the 40s but has gained quite a bit of popularity as a simple, easy to fly, easy to maintain aeroplane. It's so simple it doesn't even have flaps. You can see just how simple it is on the interior. This is all pretty self-explanatory if you know about planes. It doesn't even use a key, but there again most planes don't use keys. Yes, this is a tail dragger plane. Most planes from this era are. It's got a tail gear though, not a tail skid. Very, um... They can operate from unpaved runways, like the dirt one I just took off from. It's, it's a simple plane. It uses like a four-cylinder boxer engine. Sort of like you'd find in a Porsche, but much less powerful. You can also see I've got an altimeter. No artificial horizon on this. You've got a tachometer. Your airspeed in miles per hour, compass, inclinometer, altitude, and your oil temperature and oil pressure, and that silver thing's your engine primer. Now, being a plane with an engine, this has fuel. It took me quite a while to find out where the fuel gauge is on this. The fuel gauge, believe it or not, is actually that red thing in f just above the uh, dashboard. The now that goes, the next fuel you have. A lot of Ernie right. aircraft had it. No. No, I have not got the power. Doing such a thing would end up in complete and utter disaster. Here we are, just flying over Red Hill at the moment towards towards London. I think I'm not really sure where I'm going. Yeah, I've got, the G I've got the GPS up on the live stream, I'm doing a little bit of an experiment here. <clears throat> so you can see where I'm flying. Transparent yes, it is transparent. I've used the chroma key feature. Yes, hello to all my viewers you may be watching at the moment. We have four viewers, which is pretty good, to be honest. Now, as I said, this was a very simple training plane from the World War II era, it's 1930s, 1940s. Top speed's about 80 miles per hour, 80, 90, you could squeeze 100 out of it. James says fly past Sutton. I'm not really sure where that is, the GPS works, GPS works off of airports, it does not work off of locations. I'm just going to decrease the throttle a bit, just to maintain the, uh, the cruise. Are you banking it? This paint job is called Cub Yeno and it was standard on all the Piper J3 Cub models. Yes, it's very famous. It's like the, uh, the Ferrari Rosso Corsa, the Ferrari Red. And yes, it, it can take hard landings too. You also see it as like a lightning bolt kind of thing oh, down the side. No. This plane is so simple, it does not have an electrical system. In order to start the engine, you have to stand next to the propeller and hand prop it like you would a Ford Model T with the starting handle except with a propeller. Now, that is kind of dangerous, it has gone wrong. I'm not just talking about getting turned to soup with propellers, but some of the planes have actually flown away without the pilot in them. Some of them even take, took off and crashed, especially back in the day. There's no nights, no navigation nights, no cockpit nights. Flying this at night is an absolute no-no. This really is just for daytime v VFR flying. This is where it excels at. It's good for about 10,000 feet, but... 
I wouldn't take it up that far. VFR Barways Visual Flight Wars, it's one of the regulations on flight. It basically means flying in conditions where you can see out of the plane instead of relying on instruments, which is called IFR or instrument flight walls. This plane feels uh, this plane feels pretty comfortable at about five thousand feet or below. Can you get it up to that? Or to be honest, I wouldn't take it up any more than five thousand. It's good enough for ten thousand, but I just wouldn't want to do that. <clears throat> this also is not equipped with an autopilot system. This just hasn't got that. You can see that uh, that cable up there is actually part of the control system because it moves. To trim this plane, this you move this here, which is like a um, reminds me of the window crank on a car. It's that simple. You don't get a vertical speed indicator either, so you just have to go off whether that's slowly gaining or dropping. And as I said, this here is your fuel gauge. Propeller's made of wood, by the way. Yes, that's right, it's a wooden propeller and it's just got markings painted on it to um, tell you that there's a spinning propeller. There's your joystick down there, pretty simple joystick, no buttons on it. This joystick's just for flying. Where's the radio for music or the 78 player? Oh, the only radio on this is the portable um, airband radio you can bring on board. There's no radio built in. We're currently doing about 72 miles per hour now, which we could be doing faster, but we, I haven't trimmed the plane that great just yet. We're doing 2,205 RPM on the engine. There's a compass and the inclinometer. Hello, Martha. Now, this one doesn't actually say it, but on the real version of this plane, there's normally a sign here that says rear seat for Sono flying. And what that means is, there's two seats here, one forward and one aft. And because of how small and how light the aircraft is, you have to actually sit in the rear seat when you're flying on your own to maintain the centre of gravity. Sitting in the front seat, I'll probably tip forward and the propeller would hit the ground on takeoff. Martha says hi, Tom. I said hi back on your account. Do not use my account. I have to get a box set up on it. As I said, this uh, this silver thing's your engine primer. This is your throttle, fuel mixture, trim control. It does have carburetor heat. There's your engine mixture control. Hey, Martha, give some tips to him. And what he should mm. be doing. That's your magnetos up there. It wouldn't have start on it in real life. In real life, you just turn the magnetos on and hand crank the prop. But because this is a game, you can't do that. So it just starts itself as if it had a starter motor. Here's just that like panoramic sunroof kind of deal all early planes had that some still do. It's just appearing on cars in the last few um, years as a luxury feature. Your airplanes had them for like 50, 80 years. It's ridiculous. I know Range Rover has them, but. It's on this Piper from 1935. So that's good. Then you also get wood with this too. You don't get that on anything modern. Cars or aeroplanes. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Those are all the controls I've just walked you through. This thing is so simple it does not even have flat. Flaps are a pretty much requirement for any plane that does speeds above about 120 miles per hour, I'd say. 
this thing can't even get to a hundred or at least it can't sustain it. So on approach you can Keep just running. use the um hey, the Martha. speed you lost from reducing the throttle and flaring to Hey that. Martha, give Ollie some tips about what you should be doing. I know. Let me ha let me take a plane just for a second. No, right? it's perfectly trimmed. Oh is it perfectly trimmed? Yeah. Can't I, do, can't I do a loop the loop? No. Please. You cannot just for the viewers, just you for the will viewers. overstress it and it will fall apart and I do not want that. Go on. See if we can do a loop the loop for the viewers. I'm not sure if anyone actually did acrobatics with this plane. Let's have a go. Ready Here boys. we go. Get it up. This could end very badly. Here we go. Have a look in the Be cockpit. careful, it's only made of wood. And we managed it. There we go. Right, give me that back, give me that back. So, yeah, we, we just did a loop with it. I'm pretty sure it wasn't the best idea. This aeroplane's only made of wood. And I think the, um, the windows are perspex or acrylic or some early form of clear plastic. Maybe Xenon, which is like an early brand of plastic that you can see through. Night right alternative to glass. Alright, one last thing can I do? Yeah, there's also a door. There's the doors here. Right, I just want to do one last thing. But I can't open it. One last thing for oh, a there view. are. A, view the a viewer has requested this. No, you cannot do a barrel roll. Give me it back. Give me it back. No. <laughs> we can do it. We no. can do it. We can do it. No, we no, can't. You we cannot. You cannot. You cannot. You cannot. Yes, the door is sort of a um, hex, hexagonal, octagonal shape, sort of like a 50p, British 50p. I wouldn't think any Americans would have them. And you can see some of the wires for the controls there too. Just close the door up. <laughs> I used to think the door was on this side, but yeah, I was mistaken. That says no step on it, probably because if you step on it, you break it because it's uh, just wood. This plane is not metal, it's wood. Yes, that's right, wood. It's not, it hasn't even got any fabrics in its uh, construction. It is just all wood with a bit of what could be glass or plastic in it. I know that some of the ones I found on the uh, websites for buying and selling planes, like Auto Trader planes, some have a, uh, a wooden instrument panel. This one doesn't, this one's got a metal one. That's fancy, it's got the metal instrument panel, I've got the better trim. <laughs> you enjoying the live stream tonight? We have lost two viewers though, which is very unfortunate. Yeah. Can you fly? The Cub was meant to be a simple plane, just a training plane. It was never meant to go fast, it was never meant to deal with stormy weather good. This plane excels on the kind of VFR day, like this is... No. I'm not climb climbing to 3,000 feet. There's a whole Wikipedia article on this plane. You can read it. It's got a. Like, it talks about how um, it was intended as a training plane. They did release an updated version called the Super Cub. But I don't think they sell it anymore. But you can still buy them second hand, and they're still pretty up there when it comes to the price. There was the, uh, the previous mod before, which was called the Tyner Cub, which was Tyner was the name of Piper before they changed the name, obviously, or they got bought out, say. And uh, this is the default paint job of Cub Yeno, which is kind of iconic.
I think they did use it in the war effort in the 1940s for World War II. Would have been useful for training pilots and things like that. On the basics of how to fly. Not with any flaps or anything like that. Yes. As you enter London, you can see the Gherkin building. What a strange name that is. And the, uh, the Millennium Wheel. This plane isn't as famous as like the Douglas DC-3, but it deserves its own spot in aviation for it introduced a lot of people to how easy it is to fly a plane. This is the plane I learned to fly in this game, for instance. I didn't fly with Cessna 172 and everyone else does. Yeah, because that's what they need to do with this plane. It is very easy. You can find uh, pictures of them in a uh, wartime sort of paint job. In fact, that's what the thumbnail for the stream hey, is. A bit, man. I'm just going to turn right here, so I'm just going to turn right here so I can uh, find over with the Thames. Was that real or was it fake? It's fake. You have a generator app on your phone. At least you stop using it. You can start to make out Canary Wharf now and the One Canada Square building as well as the London Airport. I also want to give um I want to give Yeah, I want to give Is that to do it for colour of it? I actually do not like the Carbieno paint job, I actually prefer there's a cream and burgundy one. But I don't even know if that's actually a real plane, it's just in the simulator. Can we see uh, Victoria Tower anywhere around here? Hmm, same we don't have a Crystal Palace anymore, that would be a beautiful build to see on here. Pineapple, okay. Can you see the uh, thing it's called the Tower Bridge? Yeah, it is, it's Tower Bridge, isn't it? Feel free to correct me on that if I did get it one. I'm not too. F oh, a bit of turbulence. Yeah, I'm not actually up on where the um, like the parliamental buildings of London are. I'm pretty sure they're behind me now. Yeah. But this plane is so small you can actually just fly it right next to Big Ben and have a look at his face. But I, I can't really find him. Also, there's a lot of turbulence down here, and turbulence on a small night aircraft really does scare me. Just flying around London. There's the Battersea Power Station over there. Oh, there it is. Victoria Tower. Just, uh, Victoria Tower dead ahead, like 12 o'clock. No chance, this thing, I can, I can end this. Plane's out a little bit of a, um, well the turbulence really has taken over. Seems that London's air, London's air is pretty turbulent. Oh, Yes, to one of our viewers, Martha, do you understand what turbulence is and why it can be pretty dangerous for airplanes, especially small ones? I got the engine all the way down here, 
so I can descend without over speeding it. No, I don't know. Turbulence is air, isn't it? Yeah. And it's air that's moving or not. So it takes plane about. You know like how a uh, boat sways about or not in the bad sea? Well, it's the same with air. Air is basically a fluid like water is. Ask Martha if she ever wants to go up on a real airplane. Yeah, would you like to go up on a real airplane? Martha. Martha. Nope. Why? Well, are you air sick or something? Yes, yeah, so there's um, there's the clock tower, and all the other buildings. See how tiny a plane this is compared to Victoria's tower. We built bigger things in the Victorian era than he did in the uh, 1930s. What? Okay. Yeah, and I know one of our viewers, James, isn't up with the history of London, so I will explain the best I can. I don't like height. Well, that's okay. I didn't like heights when I was younger, but it, it gets better. There really is nothing to fear up there once you're above the clouds. In fact, it's safer up there than it is down here because there's nothing you can, um, nothing else you can crash into, nothing else you can hit. There's the tower bridge like I've already mentioned. Gherkin building on our left. One Canada Square. Dead centre. That building's actually made out of aluminium with an inner finish. There's a the turbulence back again. Look at the way the plane just goes all over the place. I have to fight with it. I don't really know much about the history of London. It was, at one point, one of the greatest cities in the world. And the image of a, um, the image of a Victorian man driving his horse and cart in uh, dark, rainy Victorian London is a sort of popular cult thing. And Jack the Ripper and things like that. And of course, uh, Victoria Tower. That's a famous thing on its own. Tell James never to say never. Oh, your copy of Flight Sim 2004? Sometimes never. Well, you can have my copy of Flight Sim X because I've got it on Steam now. Tell him that Flight Sim 2020 is coming out Yes, Flight Sim 2020 is coming out sometime this year, which we are getting. Tell him you need a minimum bandwidth for 50, but I think we're 170. You need a minimum bandwidth for uh, 50, but we've got 170, so we're fine. Pretty knocky when it comes to the internet. Yeah. Uh, most people have got about 100, haven't they? Yeah. What most people have got? We only have two viewers now. You can see the uh, Millennium Dome down there. HSBC building. One Canada Square, which is the one with the uh, pyramid roof. That may look similar to the financial centre building in New York, where the World Trade Centre used to be. That's because it's actually designed by the same architect, believe it or not. You see London Airport down there. This... Martha has got bored and left. Oh, well. well, we do have three viewers now. This plane really does fly plane for you, Snow. Ask Martha if she's still there. 
I'm currently doing about 74 miles per hour, which it's the same speed a car would do on the motorway. So you don't have fast internet up in the top part of the UK. No, I'm <laughs> actually talking to you, James. It's funny what happened. You've not streamed. Did you get your family and friends watching them? Yeah, I think. Um, yeah. I think. Most people have a download speed of about 100 megabits per second, don't they? Yeah. And an upload of about 20? Yes. We've got about 170 downloads that's a, lot, you, a lot of the time. That's if you're of my plane from and London you, you need, Tower. You need 50 megabits per second uh, download minimum for Flight Sim 2020. I don't, it's not going to be a problem though for most people because most people have got that. Most people have got at least 50 megabyte download. A second and a good upload as well. Some people only have 50 megabyte download, did you know that? Hmm. What do you say about that? Must be in like developing countries or something. Oh yeah, but... The countries where I still use the darkness DC3. Not as if that's a bad thing. Oh no! 50 megabyte per second download. In the developing countries. Not bad. There's a view of my plane from London Tower. You see the markings on the propeller as you're warning to stay away from it. That is spinning. This plane's good for about 10,000 feet or so. But. I really wouldn't take it up that high. I'm happy with ISDN speeds. Well, there's a flashback to the early 2000s right there. ISDN. This really is a basic plane, it was uh, intended as a training plane and nothing else. You can find plenty of them on the internet, on websites for buying and selling planes. They're sort of, sort of a cult icon. Just like the DC-3. Especially when it comes to the sheer simplicity of such a thing. As I said, not even any flaps. And it only has one door. Well, sort of one door. It's got two that folds up like a tailgate on a car. I'm just seeing if I can hit 80 miles per hour descending. I haven't really been able to get more than 80 out of this plane. As I said, bring it up to 100 or so and you're risking tearing it apart from the stress. This really isn't a fast plane. It's, as you said, it's got four cylinder boxer engine like you'll find in a Porsche, except it's not less powerful. About 50 horsepower. Which isn't exactly. Uh, which isn't exactly equivalent to 50 horses. A lot of people make that mistake. It's actually um, just a measure of work over time. Some horses, the big carriage breeds, can do now. 14 horsepower peak. Do you know who had the best connection of World War One planes in the world before some got destroyed? No idea. How long is the stream? Oh, I don't know, it might go to like 10 past 12 or something like that. I typically stream for well, not that long. Some people do this for hours. 
The bridge we are currently flying towards is the Dartford Bridge, also known as the QE2 Bridge. Goes over the Thames, and there's a tunnel underneath it too. You take the bridge, or the tunnel, which is very strange because it's under water, it's under a river. You find, you, as I said, you probably find pictures of it on the internet. It's a steel cable suspension bridge. It's not really that impressive of an engineering thing. There are bigger bridges, Golden Gate Bridge, things like that. But I'm not really here to talk about bridges, so I'm going to stop. I'm, I'm talking about aeroplanes, particularly the J3 Cub. I'm not sure where the name Cub comes from. The designation is actually J3. Cub means like a little... Um, like a pup of um, an iron, you know, like an iron cub. It just means the little thing and the big thing. You can imagine it's next to a DC-3 and it being like the cub and the DC-3 would be like the, um, the mother, that sort of thing. Picking up some speed here, almost nose diving as we fly towards the Dartford Bridge. That bridge is actually pretty high for what it is. It doesn't look that high here, but it is very high. Well, you, can, stream, you can see the shard building from the Dartford Bridge, but you, you can't see the shard building in this game, unfortunately, because it was released years ago. I before can see the shard building in Black. There's no child building. I don't even know we what won. that is. We won! 50 pounds on the premium bonds! We won! Well, 50 pounds on the premium bonds. That's snucky of you. What a load of bollocks. Right, okay, so... Premium bonds in our case sort of um, investment thing in the UK. You put your money into them and you have a chance of winning every well, month well, and the going, more money you have going, going. the more money you have in a premium bond the more chance you have of winning it and one or two people a year walk away with like the million pound prize I'm pretty sure America probably <coughs> has an equivalent to it you can see the entrance to the Dartford tunnel down there <coughs> please no not that you drive away our viewers doing that. It's the end of the world as we know. Now as we're going over the uh, the bridge you can you can kind of see it. No. Let's nose dive towards it for a second and then no, I'm sure that's perfectly safe. I mean, if you turn back, you can see what you can see from the bridge, approximately. It's much less impressive than what you see in the game. It's sort of like that, but it's much more foggy. Early. It's much more foggy, and um, one kind of the square is very... One can of the squares are not bigger in Will Knife from uh, that point of view. There's the motorway there. Can you can you stop singing? You do this on every live stream and you drive away our viewers. My viewers want to learn about aeroplanes in the history of aviation and not You won't shout as I fit in the bell. The belt. The belt. Can you walk into that spinny thing? 
Don't worry, he's always not like this. It's the end of I'm the actually world. going to turn around now because I'm just going to end up flying <laughs> off of the. Uh, I'm your uncle Ernie and You're just being rude now. Get out. I mean, just get out of my studio. Never mind the weather. The Tommy's the holiday. Name it. No, need for. Can you go to Mount Everest if I... You can go to Mount Everest, yes, you see the pyramids in Egypt too. And you can also see Mount Fuji in Japan. And I think I'm going to do that for the bonus segment, is uh, a trip to Mount Fuji. Which you can uh, you can get from, from Tokyo International Airport. I'm now flying towards Biggin Hill Airport, Ken in that sort of direction, away from London. You might notice that if you're more eagle-eyed that the uh, 9 there has moved. That's because it's my fuel gauge, as I've already said, and it's telling me that I'm getting no and no on fuel, just like a, uh, a normal needle gauge does. All my brother does is just chatter, chatter, chatter into the microphone or not. No, yes, I'm flying towards Biggin Hill Airport, oh, which you can see was... on the uh, you can see on the GPS about here. Now the problem with going to Mount Everest, there's a problem. You can't go. To We're Mount... visiting Mount Fuji in the bonus segment. Yeah, but you can't go to Mount Everest in this plane because this plane can only go about seven thousand feet above sea level. Mount Everest is about 30,000 feet above sea level. Yeah. In order to go above Mount Everest, you'd have to be in a fighter jet or um, a... Would you feel comfortable um, flying an American jet in Japan? Especially a war plane. Would I feel comfortable flying an American jet in Japan? No. <laughs> Shall we now that big hill? Is that the M25 down there? I don't know. The GPS only operates well, off of airports and not locations or... It's not a car GPS. Would I feel comfortable flying a Japanese jet... What is that? Sorry. Would An I American jet into Japan. I don't, um... Don't know if it would be a good idea. Well, it's another really annoying thing that's happening is... Maybe I would that, feel comfortable. Yeah. The sun, because the sun is behind me right now, it's actually washing out all the gauges on my instrument panel and I can't read any of them. Seriously, have a look at that. No music, it's copyright, I just had to... <clears throat> I think it's unmuted now. Yes, the sun has washed out pretty much all the gauges on my instrument panel, which means I can't really see my altitude, my airspeed or my RPM. I see what Tom's getting at there, very clever. Make a song about Tata. What? Yes, I'm going to land at Biggin Hill Airport and then we're going to do a bonus segment, which is going to include Mount Fuji <coughs> in Japan. I'm clearing my throat or not tonight, I don't know why. Yeah, I think we're both dying. It better not be that weird virus from China everyone's talking about. Nice they heard it was on in some cruise ship in China and now it's all over the bloody world. <coughs> what a good song. And a good band as well. Now it's only seven You can see the, uh, this is the Millennium, the Millennium, uh, Dome or the O2 Arena. Oh, yes. Oh, That's where the Eagles performed at in 2008. No more doubt of Eden. That is a good album, that. 
It's a bit political. If you don't like politics or political references, don't listen to it. But if you don't mind that, give it a listen. I agree with you. You might it's find that it's a bit relevant in the modern there's day. There's great tracks on that album, like I won the British Motocross Race. No, that's not no, that. We're the broken the different arm song. and. I flew a glider into Blackpool Airport. No, different, Lampkin. different song. I outflew the military in no, the pipe different with song. Three. No, different song, different song. In case you're wondering all, where all these songs come from. They were written by me. They were ri- That was written by me. I wrote that song. My brother used to run a small band with my other brother. And, I, and they used to I was the writer. together. It was uh, after one Christmas where my dad bought him a Yamaha MM6 synthesizer. And together they wrote some of the most ridiculous songs I've heard. They wrote songs about cats. They I wrote, wrote songs about... I wrote them. They wrote that weird song about C2C. <laughs> if the C2C is laying yeah. in my hair, it's just break, I don't like it. Yeah, it's just I, really I, I, weird if stuff. I want to stop away and there's no one They even there. wrote songs about football. Oh, yeah, I wrote all of that. James was just, uh, he was sort of an inspiration, giving me ideas, but it was all my writing. Yes. All, all my writing. There was one song they wrote where they lost it because the synthesizer didn't save it correctly. This microphone I'm using, he bought just to make parodies with. Back when the quarantine first started, he was thinking about making a parody of Ultravox about sneezing on a window frame. Ultravox, what a good band. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Ultravox, what a good band Ultravox were. Yes. Dancing with tears in my eye. Oh. Maybe Clement to do 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 That's just me using the portable radio I have on board. So I have no... There's no radio built into his plane, by the way. See, normally... Nothing like that. Normally, James would be complaining. But you're required, not legally, to have a radio on board a plane, no matter what model it is. That's where the portable ones come in, like the CB radios. But they do I the airband the songs, instead. I write the song. Can you stop that? You're hijacking the mic. Everybody's turned off. You're driving our viewer base away. <laughs> what viewer base? Call me in Alaska if it all turns out right. You, you can go. You can go to Alaska and ride a uh, dog sled. Nobody's watching. Everybody's turned off. Just don't ride a dog sled down a mountain because you'll go horribly one. What's that? Brokeback Mountain, is that your favourite film? No, if you, I said oh, if you rode a dog sled down a mountain, it would pick up so much momentum that the dogs wouldn't be able to keep up and so bad. Yeah. Reconnection successful. Yeah, uh, is the router working? Uh, yeah, the stream's back on air now. I've no idea what happened there. We're just coming in to land at, um, at Biggin Hill. Unable to connect to chat, please try again later. Oh, you gotta get chat back, you gotta get chat back. Chat back's gotta come, chat's gotta come back. Crap! Can somebody put a message in the chat, please? I don't, I yes, don't think it's working. Yes, can someone put a message in the chat? We need to test it to make sure it's working. We might have to make use of the technical difficulties screen. You don't want to be subjected to that oh, weird electronic shame. music over and over again. No. And the picture of the broken plane as we try and fix the problem. It's not working, the chat's not working. Shit. Tell them technical difficulties, stand by. Gotcha. Go on, technical difficulties, screens. <laughs> Okay. 
Unable to connect, yeah. I'm not refreshing it. Crap. Can you what write a message in it? No. Right, we still the chat. There you go. We still the chat there. Okay. Okay, are we coming back? Sorry about that guys, just a little bit of technical difficulties. The Are we back? The stream went down for um, a, about a few seconds, maybe about 30 seconds. And I now think it's, it's back. because you've got the Illuminati watching. <laughs> it's, it's back now, I'm not sure if the chat's working now, I think the chat box might have fried. No, no, I can't. <laughs> we should have been discussing... YouTube have probably found out, YouTube and the Reptinians have found out that he's been singing music and have probably done it as a copyright thing. I seriously have no idea what's just happened Warning, in... The streams can't, what? In all my years of streaming, I've never seen that. It just said... Oh, it's just a bit way that happens all the time, it's nothing bad. It just said... Warning, disconnected, attempting to reconnect. I will monitor chat. You might have even seen it come up on the screen. I will monitor chat. Yeah. I will monitor chat. Oh, you've never seen the Fortnite that before. I'm on the chat monitor. Yes. And if one of our viewers, please write something in the chat to see if it's still working after this weird blip that's just that's happened. That's okay. I'm, I'm on the chat now. Yes, you got the chat back? Good, good. I'm, I'm on the chat. I'm on chat. We have six viewers at the moment. They didn't get to experience the uh, technical difficulties that just happened. But we're on approach Biggin Hill, which is a um, little airport in the UK. Where Hi, Martha. The uh, Heritage Handler. They Hello, Martha. They keep all the. They keep hold of and maintain all the Battle of Britain Spitfires at Biggin Hill. It's a uh, very significant place to World Have War Two history. ATC? Yes, UK history. We better get this landed because we got the bonus plane coming up in 15 minutes. Yes, we got the bonus trip to Mount Fuji in an FA18. You're going to have to take off. Yeah, but you're gonna. You can't take off over the English countryside, you're going to have to take off, um... RJTT, Tokyo Airport. You're going to take off in Tokyo. Again, I'm extremely sorry if the chat's not working. My streaming software, for some reason, had a heart attack <laughs> just uh, about two minutes ago. No, it says up there, excellent connection. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> Even with the best connection in the world, there's still problems. Also, everything went red. On the, st on the status it all went red, it said error system down, mm. we have a problem, the I've never seen it ever. The, the four lights on the left side of the runway, the precision approach path indicator, it it's says saying red. you're too low and somebody just switched off. No, oh. it doesn't really matter in a plane like this, you can e you don't even have to fairies, you can just balance them on the two front wheels. Have you asked ATC? Yes. ATC have given me clearance for one way free. Which I think there's only like one or two one ways here. Ladies and gentlemen, brace for crash, brace for crash. I hope this is the right one way I'm on approach to. Hello, Matthew. Stop doing that, that's really weird. You're going to drive our viewer base. We have six viewers. Watch as I get scolded by the ATC for oh. landing on the one runway. Ask the six viewers to stay, please. Yes, please stay. Need that knob where it is. There's definitely some interesting content coming soon. A bit high, a bit high, a bit high. Martha, can you say hello on the chat to confirm it's still working? Yes. Or James or somebody? Someone just type something in the chat because we had a technical problem a few minutes ago. 
which knocked the stream out for a few um, seconds. It knocked us off the air for a few seconds, and I think it's knocked the chat out completely. So, someone, please just write something in there. Put an annoying mo emoji in it or something. Yeah, James confirm is confirmed. James is confirmed. It's still working. Thank you very much. Okay. Right up. Look at that landing. That was great. <coughs> is it still working? <laughs> ATC are like, get off the runway. Clear the runway. <laughs> Just cancel my landing intentions. <laughs> yes, Biggin Hill is a very interesting airport. Should definitely look it up. So now that we've done this uh, this segment, we're going to go on to the bonus one where we um, we do the fighter jet. We fly it to Mount Fuji. So back to the test card screen. We're going to choose a Boeing F, maybe an F-15. I'm not sure. Let's choose an FA-18. Could do a Norfolk Grumman Stealth Bomber. Nah. Just do the FA-18. Tokyo needed international. Just set the time back a little bit. Let's get this... Um, Quick flight to Mount Fuji on the way. This is one of the biggest mountains in Japan. Right. Sorry, let's just get rid of that. Yeah. And we, um, up and running in the FA-18 at Tokyo Airport. This thing is really loud, so if you can't hear me over the afterburners. Also, sorry about the GPS, because I got rid of it to uh, change the plane, it disappeared too with it, and I can't really be bothered to set up again. Now, of course, we do not want to fly over Tokyo. We need to go find the uh, mountain. I think the mountain is like a heading of like 260 degrees or something. OMG. Yes, I know. I know I'm overstressing you. I know you're about to fall apart. That doesn't matter though. I've got overstress turned off. Their mountain is there. Or at least, I hope so. You can just make it out. We're going to fly towards it with our afterburners fully on. This still says unable to connect to chat. I hope the chat is still working. We've lost a few of our viewers, probably because we aren't talking about the Piper anymore and that we're in the bonus segment. Very sorry about that. Airplane says I'm over speeding it. I do not care though. I've got overstress turned off. Yeah, I just, I have no idea what happened with the streaming software. There's this green square that told me that I'm on the air. It just went red and said off air. Something happened, maybe a blip in the internet, or something that just knocked us off the air for like 30 seconds while I was on a poach to big bigging in the Piper. And I didn't notice until the software gave me the warning and I saw the red night. And of course the chat went off nine too. Yeah, everybody's switching off now. Yeah. Can't really see over the clouds. Don't they, they want to see you land it again, what's that? Where is Mount Fuji? Just just make a B9 towards it, sorry. 
Yes, I know it says over speed, I've got over stress turned off, so it'll be alright. And yes, Mount Fuji is what Fuji Film and that Fuji Xerox oh. and other companies are named after. Especially Japanese companies. Apparently no go for the car company Infinity is meant to be Mount Fuji. See so just high this just how high this mountain is. Look how nice the clouds are. Why can't you hold me here? It's you, that's why I can't hold any viewers. <laughs> it probably doesn't help with in the bonus segment at the moment. We're not we're near eleven thousand feet up. And this mountain is just huge. There's not kamikaze into it though. Open the canopy. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not meant to be done. I'm pretty sure the canopy will just fall off. About an M thousand. Can you stop complaining, Over. airplane? Over. I thought you were meant Over. to do this. Over. You're not fit for purpose. You over G way too easily. That's oh. because the poor fucking pilot's dead. I'm over G. <laughs> I'm not even turning it that much. It's meant to do this Over. kind of turn. Over G, over G, over G, over G. Shite pilot, eh? Over G. That's why I have a peak of a mountain, look. Over G. It's like 13,000 feet up the over peak. G. Over G, over Now we're going to fly over back G. to Tokyo. Over G, over G. What's that smell? This is smell generator you have. Oh. Or maybe I should call it reviews destroyer, that is your voice. Oh. Yes, this plane has afterburners. Viewers everywhere, not on this planet, but everywhere. I'm going the right for direction for Tokyo. I think so. We'll soon see when we get when we get nost in Japan. Do you mind not blowing your nose? That is extremely rude. I've got shit in here. It actually doesn't. You're just making it up to destroy my viewership. Just stop. Yes, we're going to none now. I'm just heading back to, um, just heading back to Tokyo to Nand. This bed was smelled. It actually doesn't at all. It smells really clean, actually. I think you crapped in it. That's, yeah, I, I think you're trying to sabotage my live stream. Right. Nearest airport. This GPS is so cumbersome to use. Yes, Tokyo need it international, direct to. Yes, yes, yes. Where we are, we're on route to um to Tokyo International now. Back to where we come from. Put that on my yeah, other screen yeah, where you yeah. cannot see it. Has James left or Martha? I don't know. I have no idea. I've turned off the thingy now. You get the live chat window up again so I can see what's going on. You should be able to leave that thing flying itself. Just get 
live chat window up. Yeah. Potato! Oh, there you go. The live chat is only working like that. Potato! So, yeah. Um, sorry about the chat not working on the stream now. We, uh, the glitch we had about you've 10 minutes ago goods. now knocked you've it out. Got, you've got Martha, James, and James's TV. That's like literally it. Yeah, and the more viewers you have, it boosts it, doesn't it? That's the airport down there, isn't it? But, mate, to get your YouTube career going, mate, you need some fucking dynamite. What, you mean I have to blow something up? Don't forget to talk to ATC. Okay. Oh yeah, let's do that real quick, shall we? <laughs> Where's the airport? Tokyo Tower, Boeing, November 007 is four miles southwest with my command. Boeing, November 007, Tokyo Tower, enter left base, runway 3, left, <laughs> altimeter 2992. Enter left base, runway 3, 4, left. One more thirty four on F. On the end of this, plus bonus signal. Over. Yes. You can't There's land from way. there. Zero, zero, seven, clear to land. Is that one over there anyway? Okay. Over. G. Over. G. What? Is this your landing approach? Yes, what I'm going to do is, is I'm just going to fly out a bit and then turn back. I say, yeah. Fly to the end, yeah. Shouldn't take very long in that craft. Am I on top of that boat? Oh yeah, that boat. I didn't see that. I'm, I'm too busy trying to keep it lined up with the iOS thing on the GPS. We're going too fast now. Too fast to land. Too fast to land. Too fast to live now. Over G, over G. <clears throat> oh, he stopped complaining of over G's. Right, are you coming in to land? Yes. Here we go. There we go. Let's deploy our gear. Flaps, full flaps. Keep the nose up, keep enough power. Keep the SP. I think these dice have flaps. Yeah, it does. Make sure that you add power when needed. And once we're on the uh, one where I'm going to push the key on my keyboard and activate the speed brake, and we go quick. When it's at 34R, not L. Oh, well, it's coming in the wrong way. Look, Matt, I just land there anyway, isn't it? Yeah, and this gets scolded by air traffic control for the second time tonight. <laughs> Is the Yorkshire one still watching? Probably. Well, we have four viewers. That's good. Here he comes. Watch your airspeed. Watch your airspeed. Slow down. 150. 34 neft. Look at that touchdown. Sweet. 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 Do you see my speed brake there? Now we just got to jam on the brakes. Boeing 007, turn next taxiway. They're getting me off the one way now. No, it's a turn left, not right. No, I do not care. I'm turn right. Zero, zero, seven, contact ground on one, one, eight point two, well, at least land on the right one way, I guess. General Aviation Parking in a fighter jet. Yes, okay. Taxi 
I'm just activating my foldy win which of course does that if you remember on the nice screen I tried to take it off with that enabled and it wouldn't take off well obviously it wouldn't be able to generate enough nift Okay, We're just taxiing to general aviation parking in a fighter jet. And that's it. After that, put, put the wings up. Makes it easier. I have. I've activated the foldy wings. Show us out from the outside. Nice. Nice. James wants us to take off and fold the wings in the air, which I've already tried. It won't let you do it. Trust me, yeah, it just won't let you push the button. Again. Tried it last night, dude. And no, it won't take off with the wings folded either. Oh, you can taxi at whatever speed you like then. <laughs> the brakes on this are really effective. Mm. It isn't. No, what is that smell of shit? There is smell of shit now. If there is a smell of something, perhaps you should investigate it. If there isn't actually a source of the smell, maybe you should go see a doctor Seems because to be that can be. from your vicinity, though. Maybe it's the computer getting a bit warm. No, it's not. It, uh, it's my case. It's plastic. And plastic does make a really strange smell yeah. when it's warm. Best not to breathe that smell in. It can be poisonous. Can you carry on taxi there and conclude? Dude, it's got to... No. <laughs> they want me to taxi through the entire airport. Yeah, not going to happen. Make a beeline for it on the grass. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not gonna happen. Fuck them. What's your language? Screw them. You guys, I'm going home. I'm the only person in the world who can drift the fight again. Come from the outside. Oh no. Oh yeah. That would be key. It's because they, he turned right off the runway I told him to go left. I wanted to clear the runway because what if a big 747 wanted to land and crush me? They tell you not to stop on it for that reason. And now I'm just drifting around. Problem is, there'd be you, you'd be there, but then there'd be some arsehole in an Antonov. It'd probably be like, you know, James would be in the Antonov, wouldn't he? Yeah. He wouldn't catch you though. Well, James does have the news of grandeur. He drives that rusty Mercedes, doesn't he? <laughs> no, don't say that. He does. <laughs> he drives rusty cars. <laughs> no, that's me. Stop it. <laughs> James would have heard that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even get this plane to do a B9 towards it. Oh, is it over there? Bingo, okay, whatever you just said. I don't know, there's a small beach craft key in here. Okay, stop. Stop. Hey, stop. I'm not parking next to that peasant in his beach craft. I'll park over here, thank you very much. And that concludes the... I drive better when you fly. Hmm, not sure about that. I can actually fly a jet when I'm concentrating, or Cessna for that matter. I even landed a Concorde before, without it crashing. Anyway, that, include, that concludes this stream for tonight. Hope you enjoyed. Good night. Thanks for watching. There'll be another one tomorrow. Again, good night. <laughs>